Here we've got a pretty classic number theory problem, and I'm not quite sure the origin of this problem, but I've seen it in a couple of different places. So our goal is to find all natural numbers n such that n minus 1 factorial plus 1 is equal to n squared. And to motivate our solution, we'll like to think that a factorial type object will always eventually be bigger than a polynomial type object. Here we've got this n minus 1 factorial term on the left and this n squared term on the right. So this left hand side of the equation will eventually get much, much larger than this right hand side of the equation. We just need to figure out when it starts being always larger and then we know there's no solution after that point. Hopefully that's a small enough number that we can just check cases under that number. So how might we do that? Well, maybe we'll replace n minus 1 factorial plus 1 with some cubic polynomial. And we'll replace it with a cubic polynomial that is always less than our n minus 1 factorial. But then if you've got a cubic polynomial, it's pretty easy to check when a cubic polynomial is bigger than our n squared type term. So that's kind of the idea behind all of this. Well, we're gonna use one more trick, and that is we will symmetrize this equation so the cubic polynomial is a little bit nicer. Okay, so let's jump into this. So let's let n equal m plus two. And I wanna point out this only works for n values bigger than or equal to three. So that means we'll have to check the n equals 1 and the n equals 2 case on their own. Maybe I'll let you guys do that. n equals 1 and n equals 2 give us no solution. Okay, great. And now we'll plug this substitution into our equation and see what it looks like. So instead of n minus 1, we will have m plus 1 factorial plus 1 equals m plus 2 quantity squared. Okay, so let's write a little bit of a sub goal. So I'll write it here. And that is to find some number which I'll call a, which is a natural number, such that if m is bigger than or equal to a, then m plus 1 factorial plus 1 is strictly bigger than m plus 2 squared. Then if we find that a, then it's pretty clear that there will be no solutions for m bigger than or equal to a, which leaves us just to check the cases for m equals 1, to all the way up to a minus one. So obviously if this a is some large number like 470, this is not really good. So obviously if a is a sizable number, this is not efficient, but hopefully a will be fairly small. Okay, so let's get going how to find that a. I think maybe the first thing to do is notice that we're dealing with a square polynomial over here. So maybe we should find a cubic polynomial, which is obviously smaller than this m plus 1 factorial plus 1. So let's start with this over here. So we've got m plus 2 squared. That's supposed to be equal to m plus 1 factorial plus 1. But let's notice that m plus 1 factorial plus 1 is most definitely bigger than or equal to m plus 1 times m times m minus 1 plus 1. So we have equality here if m is equal to 2, but we have a strict inequality if m is bigger than 2. So that means we've got m bigger than or equal to 2 where this inequality right here is satisfied. But now notice that this right hand side is a cubic polynomial and cubic polynomials want to be larger than square polynomials. So if we can find all of the places where this cubic is larger than this square, well, then our equality can never be satisfied. So let's write that down. So we want to find natural numbers m such that m plus 2 squared is strictly less than this cubic polynomial over here, which can easily be calculated. That is m cubed minus m plus 1. 
So notice if this inequality is satisfied, then this equality right here is impossible. And thus we found our value of A. So multiplying this out and moving some things around, we see that this reduces to something which I'll call f of m, which is m cubed minus m squared minus 5m minus 3 being bigger than 0. So we want to find the values of m where this occurs. Well, let's make a little chart of this situation so we can get an idea for what's going on. So let's say this is our numbers m and this is our numbers f of m. We actually don't need many values in order to get a guess. So let's start here with m equals 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So if we plug 0 in there, we'll get negative 3. If we plug 1 in there, we'll get negative 8. 2 will give us negative 11. 3 will give us 0, which is pretty interesting. And then 4 gives us the number 25. So that tells us that f of 4 is most definitely bigger than 0. Now it seems like, since this is a cubic polynomial, we probably have f of m being bigger than 0 for all m bigger than or equal to 4. So I'll put a big question mark over this because this is actually what we want to end up showing. So that means that our a value, as described in this orange box, will be 4. That's actually not too hard to check, and we can do that with a little bit of calculus. So let's calculate f prime of x. So I've replaced m with x, so it's like a continuous variable. Notice that that's going to be 3x squared minus 2x minus 5. We can go ahead and factor that and see that that is 3x minus 5 times x plus 1. Then it's easy to see that that has zeros at well, negative one, and then at five thirds. That means everything to the right of five thirds will give us a positive number for the derivative. But four is to the right of five thirds. So we've got f prime of x is bigger than zero for all x bigger than or equal to four. So what do we have going on here? We have f of four is positive. And then we have our function is increasing everywhere past 4. So it's just getting more positive, if you will. So putting those two things together, we see that in fact, yes, we have proven that thing with the question marks. f of m is bigger than 0 for all m bigger than or equal to 4. Which means we can go over here to our orange box and we see that there are no solutions for m bigger than or equal to 4. Which means all we have to do is check m equals 1, 2, and 3. But notice m equals 1, 2, and 3 corresponds to n equals, well, 1 plus 2, which is 3, 4, and 5. Keeping in mind that the homework was to check the n equals 1 and 2 case on their own, and you get no solutions in those cases. Okay, so let's go ahead and check these remaining three cases. So I'll make a chart. One part will be n, and then we'll have n minus 1 factorial plus 1, and then we'll have n squared. So obviously what we want to occur is to have equality in the last two columns. And from what we just said, we only need to check n equals 3, 4, and 5. So notice if n equals 3, we get 3 minus 1 factorial. Well, that's 2 factorial, which is 2, plus 1 is 3. Well, 3 isn't a perfect square, and it's most definitely not 3 squared, which is 9. So there's no solution there. Now we want to look at the case when n equals 4. So we'll get 4 minus 1, which is 3 factorial, which is 6, plus 1 is 7. That is not equal to 4 squared, which is 16. So just to reiterate, we have no solution here and no solution here. So we've got one last chance for a solution, and that's n equals 5. We plug that into here. We get 4 factorial, which is 24, plus 1 is 25. And 5 squared is obviously equal to 25 as well. So as we see, we found our solution, which is n equals 5. So, and in fact, that is the only solution. 
n equals one and two aren't solutions from an exercise that you can do on your own, and there are no solutions for n bigger than or equal to six by this argument we had here after we change back from the m variable to the n, the n variable. And that's a good place to stop.